In this video, we will go over how to use the DJI Smart Controller with the M300RTK. This video is intended to give you a high-level overview of the controller itself and how to navigate the system. First, let's go over the physical transmitter and display itself a bit. The DJI Smart Controller uses two batteries. The built-in battery is the main power source for this controller and can be charged via USB-C cable in this port here. It also holds a WB37 battery on the back that actively charges the main built-in battery when attached. This allows you to hot swap WB37s and, in theory, keep the controller running, if not indefinitely, for a very long time. From experience, we noticed that the WB37 cannot charge the controller faster than you can drain the built-in battery when using it, but it definitely significantly prolongs your usage time. The antenna are rigid and flip up from the back of the controller. On the top of the controller, you have your left silver dial, which controls gimbal pitch, and the right silver dial that controls gimbal pan. During automated missions, you should take care not to bump these dials as they will change your gimbal angle. Then you have your record and capture buttons. These aren't relevant unless you're manually flying and want to capture something. Across the middle of the controller, you have your HDMI port to display your HUD on a larger display control center if you so choose. Next is your micro SD card slot, which you would use to upload KML files and DSMs to your controller for mission planning if you also choose. And finally, your USB port, which you would use to run firmware updates on the BS60 battery station and batteries, as well as connect to DJI Assistant if necessary. Moving to the front of the controller, you have your control sticks, which are your manual input for manipulating the aircraft movements. They also double as navigation controls when you're in the settings menu. Next to each stick is a small black button. The one on the right will select the option you're on in the menu. The one on the left is your back button and will bring you back to the previous screen. Between the sticks, you have some familiar controls. The return to home button, which when pressed and held, will cause the aircraft to stop whatever it's doing and return to the home point. And the pause button. This button pauses your automated missions in their tracks. Next is your TPS switch. 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll want to leave it in P mode or positioning mode. This is GPS mode, which allows the aircraft to precisely hover in place when the sticks are neutral. It's also the mode you should use to run automated missions. T mode, or tripod mode, is based on P mode, but severely limits aircraft movement to allow for a more stable image capture. We don't recommend using this mode in general. S mode, or sport mode, also uses GPS positioning, but it disables the forward, backward, and lateral obstacle avoidance and makes the aircraft more responsive to manual stick input. There's really no need at all to use S mode unless you need to move your drone very quickly out of the way in an emergency situation or if you're flying for fun. Flipping the TPS switch during an automated mission will cause the aircraft to automatically stop and hover and you'll have full manual control. The power button is self-explanatory. The 5D button, as DJI calls it, controls exposure value settings when tapped left or right on the X axis and controls camera zoom on the Y axis by default. This button can be mapped to different functions in the DJI Pilot app. This is another button to avoid in general when flying an automated mission. There are a couple of other buttons on the back called C1 and C2. These can also be mapped to function as you choose in DJI Pilot, but are by default set to gimbal recenter and second camera scale. Since these buttons are very easy to mistakenly press when holding the controller, we recommend mapping them to something benign that will not impact your mission, such as navigation LED or switch display modes. Within DJI Pilot itself, your main screen contains three buttons. The leftmost will enter DJI Pilot. The next button shows your media stored on your controller, videos, pictures, etc. The far right button brings up your settings menu. If you ever want to get back to this screen, simply tap the upper left back button on the controller until you reach this view. You can also access the settings menu by swiping down from the top of the screen. DJI Pilot, there are a few home screen options. The most important are the Manual Flight, Mission Flight, and HMS tiles. Manual Flight takes you to a mostly familiar DJI HUD of your connected aircraft. Here you can customize your flight settings across pretty much every aspect of your drone and controller. Next is the Mission Flight screen. 
Here you choose between creating a manual mission or using a KML to create your flight boundary for mapping missions. Next is the HMS or Health Management System. This screen is particularly useful for managing the status of all of your components. You'll use this screen to check the status of your aircraft firmware and general health, as well as your gimbal, whether that be the P1, L1, or something else. This screen is also where you will manage your BS60 battery station firmware updates for the case itself and the batteries when it's tethered to the controller via USB. When the aircraft is connected, you can also check the flight time of your aircraft by tapping the picture in the upper left. Although this video only scratches the surface of what the DJI Smart Controller can do, we hope you found it helpful. If you have any additional questions or think we may have left something out, please let us know. Leave a comment or contact us at flightops at aerotoss.com. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more M300 RTK content, including an in-depth review of the L1 sensor and data, coming soon. Thank you